and welcome to another Unity 5 tutorial. This is the third one in the Minecraft recreation series. You'll see here that I have the landscape that we've made in the previous tutorials using Pearl and Noise. In the second part we learnt how to be able to dig a hole. So we placed a cursor in the middle where we could dig down and we also learnt about creating clouds as well as mines. Right, so today we're going to look at placing a block. Uh, now I've unfortunately put myself underground, but I should be able to place a block here. So using the other mouse button, I can re recreate the blocks. So I can delete them with one and put them back with the other. Alright, so we're going to modify the generate landscape code. This is continuing on from the code that we created in part two. Now, first of all, what I've done is to change the size of the landscape. So on these two lines at the beginning for width and depth, I've set them to 64 by 64. I'm left the height as it is. Uh, this is because I've had a few people complain that with the 128 by 128 it was starting to lag a lot uh, and that's because the real Minecraft doesn't actually have such a large world sitting in memory where it's accessible to you as such even though you can kind of see it but we've created all of these blocks and you can see them and you can interact them at any distance so it becomes a bit of an issue. So just down dial these back to 64 by 64 um, and you can leave the other settings as they are. Now as soon as I did this I actually found a bug that um, you might have found if you have tried dialing this back in the previous one. Now that bug is just down in our mining function. Uh, where is it? Yep down here at the bottom of the dig mines function. This line here. Uh, if you've used the old code you would have had depth in here. It's actually got to be height. So just replace that and that will fix any errors you'll have by changing the size of the uh, chunks of land that we're creating. Right now to put a block into the environment as I said I've done that with the right mouse click. We go down to the um, update function. In the update function you'll find the code that we created for removing the blocks. So underneath that we're going to extend that if function with an else if the right mouse button has been clicked. And then we go into this code here. Now before I explain what's going on in this code I'd just like to illustrate what is actually happening. So I'm going to use my trusty little cube diagram to illustrate what's happening when we click in the world. So imagine these are our blocks that are in the world and then we click and when we click in the environment we're doing a ray cast and we do a ray cast to remove the blocks and we're also doing a ray cast to add a block because when you add a block in Minecraft it gets attached to the side of a previous block that has been clicked. So we do a ray cast into our environment and it will hit a block. Now it's going to grab this entire block. Now the issue we have is where did we hit the block and how do we add the cube. In this case the new cube would have to sit in this spot here like this. Okay so that means we need to determine where the ray hit the block in relation to its sides and then to also use that ray, the value of the ray, to determine the location of this block. Now we can do that by taking the negative value of the ray. So it comes in, it hits there and then we take a negative value of the ray which would point back away from the cube and where it's pointing away from is where we want to slap our new um, cube. Now we also want to put the cube at um, whole integer values. So the whole world is based on 
um, blocks being positioned at one, two, three, four, etc. Uh, so if this block was, um, this is zero, one, two, um, and so it's two in the Y, uh, and it's one in the X, and it's zero in the Z, for example, like that. Um, then we're going to take these coordinates and we're going to minus one in the z direction because we said that the z direction was going to go this way, which is why it's at an index of zero. Okay, so we're actually going to minus one in the z direction out to here. And we can figure out which one of these to take one away from or add one to based on the direction of the ray that has hit our block. So wherever it hits, we know it's a side, and if we take the negative of that ray, we're actually bouncing away from that side. That's the side where it's going to go. I hope that is uh, in some way clear to you what we're doing. So let's just go back into Unity and grab our code. So this is all the new code that you need to add. And first of all, you'll see that we're testing that the uh, right mouse button has been clicked with the one. We're then doing our ray cast uh, again, which we did up further when we were deleting the blocks. And so these two lines are actually the same as above, and so is this one, as a matter of fact. Now we grab hold of the block that has been hit, and we then take away from the block's position the hit point. And that will give us a vector in the direction of the side where the new block should be added. Okay, and essentially the x, y, and z values of this hit vector are going to be the distance from where the ray hit the block on the outside to the block's center. Now, if that distance is largest in the x direction, then it means we're going to be adding our new block to the x sides. Okay, so either the left or the right. If the y distance is the furthest, then we must have clicked above or below a block because the y value is the greatest. So therefore, we need to add it above or below. And if the z is the greatest, then it's going to either be at the forward edge of the block or the back edge of the block. Now you can see I've tested for that in these if statements by saying if our x, um, what do we call this, distance, so if the distance from the center for x is greater than the z's distance and it's also greater than the y's distance, then we will add a block on the y side. And then at this point we use the ray that we cast into the environment's x direction and we take it away from the x position of the actual block. So that means it will draw on the side coming towards us that we clicked on. Now this same logic is used again for the y. If the y value is the greatest then we're going to add the block in the y direction and that will be then calculated using the ray's y direction as well. And if neither the x nor the y are the greatest values, then it has to be z, so it will be added to the forward or back of the block. And then we run our create block function that we've been using all along. And we set the last part to true because that means that it will add the block into the um, array that's storing all of the positions of the blocks and their values as well as instantiate the actual block in the world. Right, so if we save that and flick back and run, which is what I was doing before, uh, you'll be able to, if you don't land on top of the clouds, let's go down here, to click and add blocks like that and you'll also find that you can remove them as well or put them back right so that's working well 
Now, the issue that comes about from adding blocks is that we might add so many blocks that we now are obscuring blocks that are behind here and underneath. So to make this more efficient, we need to delete any blocks that get covered up by our new blocks. Right, so let's just go back to our little diagram and have a look how that's going to work. All right, so I've added in, um, let's assume we've added in this block here. And then we add in another block up on top of here, which will mean that this initial block we were talking about is now fully obscured. So to check if it's obscured, we need to go into our matrix that's storing all of the existing blocks and ask it if a block is, is obscured. So for, when we add a new block, essentially we need to go and check all of its neighbors and that they haven't become obscured. Now they're going to be obscured if they're completely closed in. Now while it is true that this block here, if we just put another block on top, is going to be obscured even though there's not one here and not one here and not one here, it becomes a little more difficult code-wise to actually distinguish between these corner ones and these ones. So I'm just taking the easy way out at the moment and just checking that the whole 26 blocks that could encase um, one of the neighbors, uh, if they're all there, then that neighbor should actually be destroyed. It's no longer uh, required in there. And we can do that with some functions that look a little repetitive and might be a little difficult to get your head around. So just above the update function, first of all, I've added this check obscure, obscured neighbors and given it the new block that we've just added position. What this function does is it changes the X, Y, and Z values um, between negative one and one and adds them to the current block so that it picks up all of the neighbors. Now, it can also actually end up calculating the block itself. So we just check here that it's not the block we've added that we're dealing with. We're only dealing with all its neighbors. So we then set this new variable to neighbor, which will have um, the position of our new block plus any changes in X, Y, and Z that these for loops are creating. We're then checking if that particular neighbor is outside the map, which means it's actually not allowed. So therefore, we're going to just continue and skip over it rather than process it because it will give us an error. Right, then we're then going to check if the world block um, for that neighbor is not null, so it actually exists. And then if it does exist, we're going to use another function called neighbor count, which will count all of its neighbors. And if that neighbor count turns out to be 26, then we destroy it. So if the neighbor of our new block is totally encased in other blocks, then destroy it. Now, this neighbor count function is just above here. And you'll see, I'll get rid of that indent. What it does is it runs these same for loops again, which is making sure it picks up all of the surrounding blocks um, in three dimensions. Checking again that we're not using the current block we're working with and then going through all of these neighbors and adding them up um, if they exist. So if they exist and it returns a count of um, 26, it means that our neighbor block is encased. And that's where this comes in down here. So if it's equal to um, 26, it's going to destroy that block. So they're the two functions you need to add above the update. Now, where do you call these? If we go back down in update, um, just after we create the block here, we then use check obscured neighbors and put our block position in there, which will then do, do the job for us um, and run those other two functions. 
All right, so um, if you're wondering if you have all the code right at this point, because it's a lot of code in this one file now, I'm just going to scroll right to the top and just go through it slowly and just pause as you need to check your own code. Oh, this line here, if you can't see it, let me just put it, enter in there. Okay, so that's our Perl and noise function. Um, none of this other code has been changed, but I can't guarantee that I didn't accidentally change something um, and didn't tell you about it. So I'm just going to go through and make sure you've got it all. And also this code will be up on uh, the website in the tutorials uh, link at holistic3d.com. Okay, this is our dig mines function that we had before and it's pretty much the same with the exception that we've had to change that from depth to height. Then we have our create block function, which is the same before. Okay, um, again, this these heights for Y are setting whether it's snow, grass, sand, or a diamond block in this case. Uh, one thing to note, we're using create block down the bottom when we add new blocks to the scene. So it will use the height in the world to set the type of block. So what we've done here is you can't select what type of block you're going to build. It will just use the one that's in the world. And being able to customize the block that's going to show up when you right click is something that we'll leave for another tutorial. Okay, so continuing on, here's our draw block function, which is the same as before. Um, if you skip something in the tutorial, you might have missed out on this little if statement that somebody found and pointed out um, that you'll get an error if you try to draw blocks outside of the size of the array that we've set up to hold all the blocks. So this little statement here with the return, if we put that in as the first thing in draw block, it will stop that error from occurring because it won't try and draw a block outside of the array. Uh, the rest of this is pretty much the same. Okay, then we have our neighbor count function. So this is new. Then we have our check obscured neighbors function, and that's also new. And finally, in our update function, okay, we haven't changed the um, deleting of the blocks or the mining, but we've added this new else if statement here, which will allow us to add blocks. All right, so we save that and come back into Minecraft. You're actually not going to see anything different when I demonstrate it because it's deleting blocks that have been uh, obscured. And because they're underneath, you now can't see them. But what I will show you is if we go to another area, if I can find something, is this is some snow. If we add some blocks to the snow you'll see that they are automatically made into snow and if we delete these green blocks which are obviously on the grass levels we add the blue blocks they'll automatically um, be grass and the same thing will happen for the sand as well this also means I guess if you dig down deep enough where the diamond layers are uh, if you remember back to tutorial uh, 2 that the um, diamond layers have like a 10% chance or whatever of um, it being instantiated. So if you dig down to the right level and start creating these blocks and you've got a 10% chance that um, the block will be diamond instead of the sand. All right, so um, that is how to add blocks in our little Minecraft world. I hope that was helpful and um, gives you some a project to work on for the weekend. And I'll talk to you in the next tutorial.